All right, let's jump right into Substance Painter and take a look at some of these new smart materials that I created. If you've been following me for any period of time, you've probably seen that in the past I have created a couple of different smart material packs, ranging from some skins, some kind of weird sci-fi organic stuff, to metals and leathers and things like that. This smart material pack is actually a little bit different than those past ones, and the reason for that is because they are smart materials, but they heavily rely on anchor points. And the anchor points are going to allow us to do some really kind of interesting, complex texturing process on our models. So let's dive right in and take a look at the first one. Um, with each individual material, we have a folder structure. So if you come in here, there's a bunch of different layers in here, things that you can modify and adjust. On each individual material down here on the base level, there's going to be a paint here button. And this is where we're going to paint and apply all of our information. So I'll just come down here and just pick a brush. And you can see that as I am painting, I'm starting to apply this kind of layered sort of paint effect across the model. So one thing you may notice is that there is some variation to the color. There's kind of like closer to bright spots. There's some of this kind of like blue that's happening around the edge where maybe it's not quite as thick. And you have a lot of flexibility to play with with a lot of these different anchor point materials. So in uh, this material, for example, you also have the ability to play with some control in the contrast. So there's an HSL so we can, you know, do things like play with the saturation. We can adjust the hue, the lightness, and you have a lot of um, variety that you can ultimately create with it. On top of that, each one of the materials also has different functionality like adding lifted edges. So if you come here to this lifted edge, you can reduce or add more of this information of where the higher points on the thicker paint start to lift off. So you can see it's kind of starting to lift in that area and you can play with that effect as well. Most of the materials have something like that, but that's kind of the general premise for a lot of these materials. So we'll just kind of move through each one. Um, we also have a paint peeled. One thing that you will notice is with these, when you slap them on, they're just white. Th that is intentional. If we come down here to our paint again, we're just going to be able to paint this information in. So this is the um, edge chipping look that we're going after. So if you want to like have like a painted metal or something like that, this is a really cool uh, application that we can use for it. So we have that. We also have a bullet hole one which if we come here, um, depending on the shape that you use or the brush that you use, you can get different looks. So um, you'll notice right now that this is happening. That is actually because uh, a layer up here is on. So you can see that you can actually see through the model now. So that is using transparency to enable us to get rid of information on the model. So obviously those little floaties, don't; those aren't going to exist but you have a lot of control or you could even come here and you know just get like one of the hard brushes and you could just tap that and boom bullet hole boom bullet hole uh, and you can play with the size and you know get different results that way we also have next this dent chipped uh paint which is going to do some similar stuff to what we've seen before um, but if we come down here we're just gonna push it really hard and you can see that it's actually denting in the metal as well as eroding that dent shape. So this might be a little bit too intrusive, but you have a range of brushes that you can use uh, inside of Painter that will, you know, work differently. So I, I, I implore you to explore and kind of see what, what works best for what you're going after. But you can see pretty cool effect. If we do something a little bit bigger, we're going to not get quite as deep. We're going to get some of that flaking paint, but also some of that denting look going on as well. So that one's a pretty cool one. Uh, next, we have a kind of bubble sort of feel. So this one is a little bit more dependent on the brush that you're using. It's just a couple of layers. If we come down here to Dirt 3, we can scale this up and we can just kind of apply like lifted um, 
bubbles on top of the surface. So if you're doing something like paint, this gives you a really nice ability to start to kind of like add some of that extra tertiary nuancy detail to our material. Um, the next one that we have is going to be this damaged leather, which this one uh, I have posted and people seem to like it thinking it was pretty cool. So if we just come here into this layer, we can start to paint that in and it's going to wear away and add some of these cracks around where we're starting to paint in. So we can do something like that. And just to kind of further illustrate what these are really useful for, I'm going to go to one of my smart materials real quick and we will drag that out and see what we can do with that. Okay, so I have this black leather that I made. So what we're going to do is we're just going to drag it out and drop it underneath this layer so that everything on top of it is going to be affecting what comes below it. So that is important with these. But you should see now this will pop in the black leather and we're going to have this weird effect on the leather now. So you can see we have this kind of cool worn in leather really quickly that we can come in and we can have affect the model in its entirety. Now, one of the other really cool things about these anchor points is we also have the ability to just like drag and drop a um, mask on top of it. So we'll just come to our mask slot and let's find an edge gun wear. I think that that one edge damage will work. So we're going to drag that over here onto our material. And once that updates, you'll kind of notice that it looks a little bit funny. It looks fine, but it's not inheriting the same properties that were happening before. So what we're going to do is we're actually just going to move it down in our stack a couple of slots to right above where the paint is happening. And then we're going to set this to linear dodge. And now we have the effect of the paint also coming into play with these smart materials. So they are really user friendly. We'll crank that up a little bit and you can see it's starting to wear across the material while also applying some of that like cracking detail and some of that like lifting of the edge where the tearing is happening. So the next one that we'll take a look at is going to be a rust streak one. This one's also really cool because um, there's another smart material that I made which is like a cool kind of rusty material, but this one takes that into account as well as creating rust streaks that will drip down with a couple of different color variations and things like that. So if we come here and start to apply it, you can see that it's going to have that kind of flaked edge as well as start to expose some dripping going on down here. So you can see some of that blue tinging that's happening as well as lifted edge. And we also have some of that bubbling happening from some of those other materials as well. So you get kind of this cool eroded rust material. And you can do the same thing applying a mask on top of that as well to get some interesting results. So next we're going to move into the burnt ones, which you can already see what that looks like there. Um, but same thing, we're just going to be able to come in here and apply this kind of information to a surface so that it kind of has that burn charred effect. There's different levels in there. You can kind of see this like gray around the outside gets a little bit thicker where things might char a little bit more. Um, so that's a cool one. Now the next one is probably my favorite. Uh, and this is going to be a burnt emissive material, which is going to do the same thing. But in the center of it, the more that you apply the brush pressure, the hotter the material's going to start getting. So you're going to get really emissive looking um, center to however intense you end up playing, pushing down your brush strokes. So you can see here what's kind of happening. It's starting to expose some more of that hot area and you can like kind of come back and reduce it, you know, depending on how much you want to apply it. And like I said, all of these have different interactions with different brushes, depending on, you know, how you're using it. But you can see this one doesn't expose quite as much of that kind of like embery feel, but you can slowly apply a little bit more of it. Or you could go really crazy and just kind of, you know, expose a lot of it. So I think that this is the coolest one, um, especially because the fact that it does have a missive on it, uh, which is a cool feature to have, you know depending on what you're trying to use this for. 
So that is burnt emissive. Next, we have a kind of burnt fabric holes, which is similar. You know, you can apply this and it's going to add the effect of like the streaks of the smoke as it's kind of moving up across the surface. And you can um, ultimately burn a hole through something if you choose. There is opacity on it, so you can see through it. And you could also apply a mask to this as well. So that's a cool one. Um, the last two have to do with cloth. Uh, these two are going to be um, like for tears and fabric and things like that. So if we come to our fabric tear, you can see that it's going to start um, tearing through the material. We're going to get kind of some of these frayed sort of little strings going on. And we can come here, we could paint out more of it so that like we don't have a lot of this stuff kind of hanging on. But again, depending on the brush you use, you're going to get somewhat different results. So you can do something like that. We also get these like small tertiary holes that happen around the, the tear as well. So kind of a cool little interesting detail with like these frays. The next one is actually going to be doing the same thing, but instead of those little frays, it's going to have strings laid across it. So like if you look at like torn jeans or something like that, this is kind of a good example of using that on that material so that you have these threads that stick across it. With the threads, you do have control to change those um, as well as adjust the height. So there is a lot of flexibility in these materials. They're kind of all set up to do something, but you do have like wiggle room inside of them to be able to adjust them and kind of manage them. Say that you really like the edge kind of tearing effect and you want to push that out a little bit more, you can do that. Um, so that's the torn cloth one. And the last one we're going to take a look at is going to be the tape. Now with the tape, one of the cool things is this kind of has a lot of flexibility. You can come down here to our sticker shape and in here I'm going to actually switch to a different brush I'll just use kind of the basic hard one and you can draw out where you want this kind of tape to be so you have a lot of control over it which obviously that doesn't look like a normal piece of tape but you can wipe away on the edges to get something that actually feels like it's supposed to. So it's kind of a little bit of an electrical tape sort of look. You have some of that wrinkling in there. You also have some of the edge lifting and you have that control as well. You also have some bubble control in here as well. So you can see there's just kind of like little pockets of air and the edge flip, which, you know, depending on how much you want, you can come in there and really kind of crank that up. So it looks like it's lifting off the surface a little bit more. Um, so those are the smart materials in this pack. So if you find those interesting, make sure to check them out. They're going to be on my store on ArtStation. I'll provide a link down below. So again, thanks for watching this. Hopefully you find these pretty cool. I think that these are really fun little tools to use and they have a lot of application in your process to kind of speed things up while also adding a lot of detail and interest to your character models. So with that said, thanks guys. I'll see you later. Bye.